Oye, Shantris, ¿cómo estás, mi amor? Bien, ¿y tú? Ah, este, tengo miedo porque la doctor Irvin está en Indianapolis. Oh, no. Eres el primero tiempo. Yo vas a hacer esta cosa. <risa> Porque so, ella, pues, uh, ella se fue al doctor, es muy, es muy tarde la puentemente, se es en el carro, vienen aquí, pero es like, oh, Dios mío, no. <laughs> so, I, I may ask you some questions, Chantrice. <laughs> That's fine. It's so good to hear your voice. Oh, oh thank you, God. He sent an angel. <laughs> How are you? How are you? I'm good. Good. Okay. Chantries, I don't see anybody else that's come in. How do I see other people's? It should tell you, I see you. It should pop up like so and so in the waiting room. If you want, you okay, can make I let, a host. Okay, tell me how do I do that? Um, or you can make me the co-host. So you'll go to my name. Okay. Under participants. Here, up here. Then, oh, in participants. Okay. All right. There you go. You'll click trees. trees. Do I hit more, more than? Yeah. Okay. All right. And make you co-host? Yes. Okay. All right. There you go. Mm -hmm. I see Dr. Dr. Liners here, but I don't see her. Oh, I see she's got herself on no pick or no on mute. Hello. Okay, here comes this CC. Hi, Dr. Liner. <laughs> um, Dr. Irvin is in traffic on her way from Indy, so I'm going to humbly try to take her place. So thank you for being with me tonight. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, Zizi, you have, is, is this going to be our slideshow? No, this is not our slideshow, right? You have our slideshow. So, um, if at any time we could become, I think we're we're gonna kind of toggle back and forth. Or okay. Azizi, what so are we I, doing? <laughs> I, made you, I made you both co-hosts. Yeah, okay. I see I can share my screen. Okay. Do you want me to give it a there try? Or are we good? Hey Sean Trees. Hey. <laughs> I'm good. What'd you say, Annie? I was just gonna say, I think the last time we practiced, you you did the moving through the slides. So yeah. That's good. Let me just close a 50 million other things <laughs> on my computer. Oh my god. It's easy. I don't know if Dr. Irvin's gonna make it for sure or not. She's tied up in traffic coming out of Indy, so. Uh, okay. Well, it's being recorded. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I will just introduce both of you and do the land acknowledgement, and then it'll be, it's your show, okay? Sounds great. <laughs> Annie, why didn't you tell me we were re uh, wearing red lipstick? Mine's at home. <laughs> I got some purple lip gloss I can put Don't on. Don't do me now. like that. Don't do me like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just saying I didn't get a memo. We didn't have all these meetings. And not one time did you say, you got some red lipstick. <laughs> Don't forget helping, to wear it. <laughs> you're helping me relax. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Is this uh is this just for women? That's what my husband said. He said, I'm gonna be a woman today. 
I'm, I'm anyway. <laughs> I said, I don't know. I've only I, seen women here, though. Martha. Yeah, I've only seen it. And I mean, it was originally uh, for um, Black women, and then it just expanded to yeah. cover okay. all topics. But I was making sure because I remember in our, our initial statement that it's Black women. And then I was like, hold up, but it's expanded. So I was like, do we need to edit that? But but I haven't seen any. No, there were two. There were two white gentlemen that came the time before okay. this one, and one of them even won a book. <laughs> okay, oh, so okay, okay. Come on now. All right, we need them as advocates too. Yeah, they need to get some of this radical self care. Right. Trying to get my water in. Me too. How much does that hold? 64 ounces. How much does that hold? 64 ounces? Mm -hmm. Half a gallon. I try to do two a day. Girl, I've been running to the bathroom though. As much water as a drink. Listen. (laughs) Listen, I'm I kind of miss you know, like on the fifth floor, it was right there. Now I have to go out into the hallway. Boy, I get my steps in. Easy if it helps. My bottom does not match my top. (laughs) (laughs) It's glamour on the top, bed on the bottom. I mean, that's how I'd be if I was at home, but I'm not. (laughs) New Zoom world. Let's just all be like that. Yeah, it took me a minute to transition of like, oh, I have to pick out outfits now. You know? <laughs> I gotta actually think about what I gotta what I'm about to wear. Yeah, definitely. Are you in your um your campus apartment? Oh, not right now. I'm in my office. Oh. Because I got to do some homework after this. So I'm just going to stick it out. I have a death cycle. So if I'm moving, I'm getting my exercise in while y'all presenting. You have a what? It's a death cycle. So I would, I'm on the laptop, so I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, But it's like a little mini bike that's underneath my desk. So I'm going to try my best to try to move the camera so that you can see it. Does everybody get these? No. So it's part of the, the wellness program here. You could have, it's like first come, first serve to sign up um, for one. Mm-hmm. Ignore my lunch and my, like, but you see it? Yeah, I can. So it's just under your desk and you just be willing on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. You fancy. I'm trying to I gotta give it back at the end of May. So it's like a rental. Hmm. How 
do you track that in terms of steps? There's a, um, it sits on top of my desk, but I also set on my watch. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Fancy. Right. People leave ISU and this is what they get. <laughs> 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 the grass may be greener. <laughs> oh, Sorry. I, we we're I gonna cut you. this part out, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> Just go edit. Go edit that part. Should I start the music? Sure. This is this is my friend Corlicia, so I mean she might want to hear some music. Go for it. Hello. Oh, hi everyone. <laughs> Can you hear it? I've had these thoughts a million times. I can see the question that's behind your eyes. Oh, oh there's Dr. Irvin. <laughs> Listen up to this truth. You are me and I am you. Everyone else is worthy. Have the ability to let people in? Yes. Okay. Hey, Aaron Smith. Guys can be here, so you don't have to be Aaron Smith. Who <laughs> is <laughs> Aaron Smith? Oh, my. I said, wait a minute, I just saw Slocum. I was like, wait. <laughs> I, was like, I didn't wait. know because you know I want to support you first and foremost. So I you was know, like, this was an all girls event. I was gonna change my name to Aaron Smith today. <laughs> but you know, it's funny because there's an actual student with this like Aaron, our Miss uh Ebony. Yeah. So I was like, wait, I didn't see her coming. Nah, you you saw the name change from Aaron to Aaron <laughs> Slocum to Aaron Smith. They said it was uh two males at the last one, and one of them won a gift. <laughs> oh well, I'm trying to let's double up. Two males in the room with these gifts. <laughs> Wait, Slocum? How does Slocum go from being Aaron Smith to Aaron? I'm so confused. He he asked this morning if he could come, and I said I don't know if it's for women. He said I'll be a woman tonight. Uh-uh. <laughs> so he changed his name, and then I said he could go back to his, his regular name. his regular identity. I mean, gender is fluid. We say that. So along the continuum, if you would like, you know, to identify as being a woman today, you have every right and privilege to do that at this point in time. Thank you. And all of this is on recording, so it's funny. So if y'all put this out there in the world, please edit this part out. <laughs> I've already <laughs> said that numerous times. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wait, no, no, but gender is fluid. That's a good educational moment. I want to keep it in there. Oh, for sure. OK, well, do your thing. Well, keep her part in there, but cut this right. stuff There's before like, that out. Right. <laughs> I was like, there's like uh, maybe five minutes before. Chantrese, we miss you. Miss y'all too. Oh my God. Hold on. It's time. My bad. Y'all need, are y'all ready for other people to get on? Or can I continue to do the Aaron Slocum thing and talk? I don't know. This is Martha's show for her until she passes it over. Oh. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> How you doing, Martha? I'm doing good. I'm I'm trying to to step in Doc E's shoes tonight, so for just a few minutes. But I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And um, welcome to Radical Self Care. 
um, spirit loving set this evening. Um, we have a wonderful lineup of of uh, speakers this evening. If I can get my now my thing won't move. But um, before each of our programs, we'd like to do a land acknowledgement. We want to acknowledge that we gather in the traditional land of the Delaware, the Kickapoo, Miami, Mountain Builders, the Pinkasha, the Potawatomos, the Suwannee, and the Wee. The Wee were um, Miami, Illinois, originally located in Eastern Indiana. They were part of the larger Illinois Confederation, People's Past and Presence, in honor with gratitude, the land itself, the people who have stewarded it throughout the generations. This calls us to commit to continue to learn how to better steward, to be better stewards of the land we inhabit as well. And if we can have 30 second uh, silence, thank you very much. Tonight, I'm very honored to welcome our facilitators, Dr. Ann Liner and Professor Aziz Arrington Slocum, and I'm now going to hand it over to them. Welcome. Hello, thank you guys for joining us. Can you see my screen? Okay, um, so I'm going to begin um, by just saying we are excited that you guys are here. My name is Professor Azizi Arrington Slocum. I'm joined by Dr. Annie Liner. Um, we're going to begin just by sharing why we pick this topic. So for me, I picked this topic because self-care is a lesson that I feel like I'm continually learning. Um, as women, we are unfortunately taught from our mothers and our grandmothers to, to um, self-sacrifice and to put others before ourselves sometimes. So it's something that I have learned and I keep learning and I keep teaching myself and keep just trying to teach everyone else how important it is to really just take care of ourselves um, before we can really make sure we're taking care of others. Um, I believe that today what we're hoping that we can do is really just try and teach you guys some of the practices to really implement self-care and to kind of break that pathology of learned behavior of self-sacrificing. And I'm Annie Liner. Call me Annie. Uh, for me, this is a kind of a new journey, although I've always been aware that self-care is important. Um, just through uh, conditioning. I've always put others first. I'm, I'm, I'm a mom, so that uh, makes it easier and more justified for me to do that. And I look at um, self-care on a continuum. And I would say on that continuum, I'm on the low end, um, but that's okay, because uh, um, we all have to start somewhere. And so uh, what I, what I'm hoping to do and why I thought this was an interesting topic was to um, start this journey and make self-care a priority. Um, I remember when I was in graduate school uh, working towards completing my doctorate, I felt like I was very being very selfish for pursuing a personal dream, a personal goal for myself um, because I had young children and other various strenuous situations going on. And um, I felt like I had to uh, give more and more and the more and more I gave, the more and more people took. And so um, restoration, I, I realized that restoration is critical. Um, we are oftentimes fierce in taking care of others and we would be offended if, um, someone considered us to be non-reliable um, or non-dependable. And oftentimes we are the person that others 
would say that has been there for them no matter what. And so that leads me to um, the segue of asking the question, who is the one person in your life who has never failed you or who has been there by your side through everything? And as you, as you think about this person, um, we ask that you um, think of those that fall in one of the listed categories or the labels um, to use the exact spelling um, of the label of the option if you see it listed. If, if you have someone else in mind that isn't listed, um, then you can present that individual as you see fit. But what you're going to do is um, enter that individual into, um, and you're going to use one word, into this program. So I think there's a link. So at the top, you will see www.mincy.com. And the code is listed there. So if you go there and enter your one word. Okay, is this the right one? <laughs> okay, so the one person, um, I think people are entering a characteristic. Um, so if you could, could we reset that? Okay, so if you could think of one person who has never failed you. Um, we have some listed here like grandmother, mother, father, friend, spouse, significant other, sibling or relative. If anyone that you can think of fits that. Is this us? Right, it's being weird. It didn't do this before. Yeah, no, no of course it worked perfectly for us. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know if y'all want to hit three, uh, reset maybe. Where? Because I entered a person and it said, wait for you to go to the next slide. Okay, reset results. Oh yeah, that's their sample, I think. <laughs> that's funny. It worked perfectly. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try it again and see what happens. I'm so confused. Well, unfortunately that didn't work. So can people share what the person that they um, hosted, but showed up as creative or leader? <laughs> <laughs> I said Queen C or Queen Carolyn, who was my mother. Your mother, okay, anybody else? I said mommy. And also, I don't know why there's two of me in this <laughs> meeting, because I'm only logged on one computer. But okay. That's because you shared the link with Corey, Iris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, who is that? That is not me. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, um, but so for me, I said friends. Friends, OK. Yes. Anybody else? Spouse. 
spouse. You're supposed to say that. Okay. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right. So we had a couple people who said mother, um, which is uh, probably, the, probably the most popular one. As you think about this person, ask yourself, why would you select that person? What has that person done that um, you would select that person? What, what's, um, how has they dedicated their lives to you in a way that make you say that they're um, the number one person who has never failed you? What types of characteristics, what types of things have they done? Anybody wanna share? I would say unconditional love and unconditional positive regard. Good. Chantry. Resiliency. Resiliency. Anyone else? Good. Good answers. Aaron, why'd you pick your spouse? <laughs> and he because says, she has been there uh, through a lot and, you know, it's a team effort, so we support one another. Good. So you can depend on these people, right? For, for me, I know my mother loves me, and I know that she would do anything for me. She, she has prioritized me like most mothers do for their children. Um, and whenever I needed her, whatever I needed her for, she was there. But when I was in graduate school, believe it or not, I experienced challenges and difficulties for which my mother could not be there for me. Um, I was, I really felt alone during that experience, like no one could help me um, with the things that I was going through and dealing with and the forces that I were fighting um, during this time, they were overwhelming and very powerful. And I feel like it was a miracle that I even graduated um, with my doctorate. Um, and at the end of it, I'm so thankful to God, I'm a very religious person. Um, so thankful to God that he saw fit for me to succeed and complete my degree. But as I began this journey of self-care, I thought about um, not only was it God, but what, what about that experience could empower me? And I realized that I was the vessel that God used for the accomplishment, for that miracle. And oftentimes we are that vessel that God uses um, to create our achievement, our success. And so since you are the vessel, it is important that your vessel is full. Um, and how do you do that? How do you keep your vessel full? You are your most valuable asset. Um, do you take care of um, the things you love? Uh, someone mentioned that their, their mother gives them unconditional love because mothers will take care of their children, right? Fathers as well. Um, do the things that you value, you take care of them. So think about yourself as the vessel um, value. So how do you do that? How will you keep your vessel? And so that moves us to um, self-care. So when we think about what is self-care, um, it's basically the demonstration of self-love. Uh, so we've, we've got two quotes here that we want to just kind of see what they mean to you, what they make you guys think. So this first one, it says, it is so important to take time for yourself and find clarity. The most important relationship is the one you have with yourself. And the second one says, self-care is never a selfish act. It is simply good stewardship of the only gift I have, the gift I was put on earth to offer to others. So kind of touching what we um, just kind of talked about in the sense of that one person who's never failed you. Yes, we have these people like everybody just kind of mentioned, but it's also the fact that 
is so important for us to also pour into ourselves and to realize that taking care of ourselves, it's, it's not selfish. Um, it's a gift that we have to give to ourselves so that we can still be there for those around us. So thinking of those quotes, does anybody have anything that kind of stuck out or anything that spoke to you? I, I think for me, the one thing that stuck out was the word of stewardship um, from Parker Palmer. And when I think of stewardship, I think about all the different resources or things that have been entrusted to me and those things that I am responsible for. And so rather than thinking about myself internally and that I need to be a good steward of myself, I'm thinking about all these different things and different people and activities that I'm responsible for. And because I think about that first, I ultimately end up putting myself last. Um, so this right here has been if I don't hear anything else today, this quote is for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that's such a good point. And, you know, it's it's always funny when you read things like this, the things that stick out to other people, because I was reading it and I wasn't paying no attention to the word stewardship. But now that you said that, I'm just like, that makes so much more sense because it it is. It's when you think of how are you a good steward? How are you doing that for others? But we forget to do it for ourselves. Um, anyone else? I think for me um, in that quote, what stands out is that um, it is the only gift I have. And that's something that I know I really emphasize uh, when I work with my clients, um, but that I also have to remind myself that God has given me one body um, and, you know, if that body, if I do damage to that body in whatever way, whether that's physically um, or, you know, mentally, like it's what I have for, for the rest of my time um, on this earth. And, you know, there are so many ways that I want to be able to pour into people, obviously my profession being one of them, but um, I mean, there's, there's so many other ways. Like, I, you know, I want to be one day, I want to be a mother. I want to be um, a wife. I, I just have so many goals um, for myself in how I want to use the gifts that um, I like what was said earlier that God has entrusted me with. Um, so I just have to remember that, you know, this is it. My one little earth suit. That's what I sometimes uh, call it with my clients. Your one earth suit to move about this earth. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to keep it fueled? Um, how are you going to take care of it and maintain it? Yeah, that's such a good point. I mean, it's the only gift we have. And if we got to feel like our gift sometimes is taking care of others, but we really have to do this. Any more comments on either one of the quotes? Okay, we will move on. Okay, so I added a quote here um, and you'll see that we have a quote almost for every slide because it's it makes it more poignant, right? Make yourself a priority once in a while. It is not selfish, it is necessary. Um, I think what you'll find throughout most of these quotes is some um, connection to pointing out that taking care of yourself is not selfish. So I want you to keep that in mind. Um, if you leave here with nothing else, leave here with the understanding that taking care of yourself is not selfish. And so um, I just want to kind of define a radical self-care before we move forward. Um, I see self-care strategies or acts of self-care, um, they kind of fall in three categories for me. So um, I think of the daily self-care that we have, that maintenance, um, and these are strategies to help us make it through our work day. So we might need to take a deep breath, we might eat some chocolate, we might um, go for a quick walk or we might shut our phones off or not talk to a particular colleague or person that um, causes any, any additional strain or anxiety. So that's the, the daily kind of self-care. 
And then I see um, another category as the mandatory self-care. This is when our body breaks down and say, you know what, it's enough. The daily self-care stuff is not working. Um, you can't take a, a deep breath. You can't go for a quick walk. I need more than that. Your body tells you you need more than that. Um, and sometimes that might be shown through um, our, us getting sick um, or oversleeping um, or lashing out at others um, or the physical symptoms of becoming really ill and needing to um, see a doctor. So it's our bodies telling us that we can't go on, everything is shutting down. And then finally, what we hope to present today um, is radical self-care. And this is the kind of the preventative maintenance. Um, this is the self-care that is intentional, it's planned and it's deliberate. Um, and it's with you in mind. So this is where you are um, planning to focus on building your mind, body and spirit. And so today we're going to share with you some techniques on radical self-care, um, some foundational ideas or thoughts on self-care, some implications of engaging in self-care or not engaging in self-care and a few takeaways. So starting with the techniques, um, the quote that we decided to include here is um, almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. So one of the things that probably if you ask most people that I know, like my mentees, my friends, um, family, even my mother, I'm always asking people, what is your me time? And people are like, what? What, what do you mean? So I'm asking, what do you do that is radical self-care that's intentional that is you intentionally taking yourself down giving yourself the self-love that you basically need so um <clears throat> i tell some of um some people like you know you have to kind of have like a bag of this me time a bag that's like this is what i can do that is I only have five minutes, but I need something that I can do. And maybe that's like Annie was saying earlier, that walk or that breathing exercise. And then you're like, hey, I, I've got a whole day. <laughs> so I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to go drive to a beach. Probably not from here in a day. But, you know, <laughs> you guys get the idea of what is it? What's on this list of what is my me time? What can I be intentional about really making sure that I'm taking care of myself and putting myself first so that I can then unplug for a minute so that I can then work again so that we can basically work for those around us. So this is supposed to be another one of these wonderful word clouds that we did not have success with. So we're just going to <laughs> ask you guys to just kind of tell us what that me time is for you. So for me, I'll kind of go first to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, I'm a person that I, I love, I love Legos. So one of my me times is you can give me some Legos, preferably architecture Legos, and I will sit on the floor and just put together some Legos for a couple hours. Um, another me time for me is sometimes literally just curling up on the couch and watching some shows, you know? Um, so what are some of your me time? I go. Somebody going? You are. No. Okay. Um, my me time is <laughs> this hair on my head um, for my wash days since it is a long process, but it allows me time to think about, typically I do wash days on Sundays. So think about what my week is going to look like, what I want to accomplish in that week. Um, what did I learn from the last week? And just thinking of all the things um, when it comes to planning and making me feel rejuvenated and refreshed um, to continue on. And also like you, curling up on my couch and watching all of my shows um, that maybe I didn't get to see during the week, like Grey's Anatomy, 
my re reality television, like Married at First Sight, uh, things of that nature um, is my me time. And then also for my work me time is getting my coffee. It's a routine. Um, it's not Starbucks, unfortunately. However, just having that time with my headphones and going to get my coffee and my breakfast, thanks for meal swipes. Um, and that in that 10 minute time is allowing me to just decompress and start my day. Yes, I feel all of those. <laughs> Chantrice, I just want to say thank you for bringing up work me time, um, because I think that's something very important that a lot of us forget about, you know, like when we say, you know, work life integration, there is some time, or I mean, I think it's important to have that time at work and that me time at work looks different than for me at home, we'll be playing video games. Um, but then at work, I think it's just walking around HMSU, not doing anything, not checking my email, um, just hanging out, saying hi to, uh, you know, my fellow colleagues and just, you know, um, just, you know, community building or establishing that relationship. I think that's separate from work. So that's something I didn't really think about until you know, you mentioned it, Shantri, so thanks. I'll go. Um, for me, I'm also here with my little sister. Um, she said her me time is uh, watching YouTube videos. Um, and she's 17, just for context. And I would say for me, I'm guilty of curling into a ball, kind of like Z, but I can curl into a ball with no, nothing on. Like, I don't need to, like, watch TV or anything like that. Just curl up in the ball and just die. Um, but sometimes I neglect to do that so that when I do actually do it, I'll spend our weekend um, in that space, which then takes away from it being me time and self-care. Uh, so I'm still trying to dabble on that line and figure out what's appropriate for me. But I would say that. And then um, wellness walks at work. I used to do them um, prior to Chantrice's departure. <laughs> um, but that was something that we used to do as, in regard to like work me time either getting up and going to get coffee or walking um, around campus for like 15 minutes. I think for me, my work me time is setting boundaries around my lunch. My lunch is my hour. I always take my lunch. Um, I know some of my colleagues, you know, will schedule clients over their lunch or, you know, um, cut their lunch down to 30 minutes so they can see a client. And I just refuse to do that because I'm not going to be able to give my all to my clients in the afternoon if I haven't paused, been able to close my door, reflect on my day, eat my lunch, fuel my body. Um, so for me, it's just counterproductive really. Um, so I'm good about saying no, like they know not to schedule anything over my lunch hour. Um, and then at home, um, I think that my most prominent source of me time is just being outside. Um, I'm a huge just nature lover and I have a, an 11 month old puppy. Um, some will say he doesn't look like a puppy anymore, but he's, he's my baby. Um, and I, I live really close to campus. So during, sometimes during lunch, after I eat, I'll walk around campus. And then um, in the evenings, we'll take like probably one to three walks. And that's just my time to just be mindful of my thoughts and, you know, my emotions and just everything that's going on in my being that day. I think that was really good that you said even the being cautious about not giving your lunch time up because I think that's a big one that so many of us do, you know, like, okay, I can meet with you for a minute. And for me, some of that is also not um, 
for me, I've gotten bad in terms of like research, in terms of giving up my research time for for this and for that. And, you know, and then that screws you in the end. So it's it's also that just being intentional about the time that you've actually scheduled for yourself. We will make a meeting. <laughs> you know, but when it's something that is lunch or something that we put on there ourselves, sometimes we're so quick to to forget about it. Um, does anyone else want to share their me time? I'll go, um, Zizi, from what you just said about getting into that research and not giving, not stopping for your me time. I, I, I never realized what a nerd I am. I love research. I love reading. But that's, I guess that would be my, my work me time. And particularly now when I'm working at home, I have to stop. You know, I have to, have to quit. I have to get up from this desk and, and do other things. And, and it's been difficult. It was difficult at first to draw that boundary, but it's, it's gotten much easier. Um, I have a couple of apps on my phone, some game apps that I really enjoy playing. Um, I love going to the garden and I love quilting. I really do enjoy reading, but you know, that that's a blurry line because everything I read is related to work for me. Um, so it's not always enjoyable. And that that's really tough when a thing that you um, enjoy so much um, has, has that extra additional weight to it. I really, my me time is also doing the things that allow me to take care of myself. I've really been on program for the past year with sleep time, with preparing my own food, with getting out and walking, with doing my meditation and, and having my morning routine. That's all my me time. And I, I really, um, I, I really come to enjoy those things. Edith, I can relate to you because I, I think the same way, like the, the I'm, I'm constantly working, but I was convincing myself that this was my me time <laughs> um, with all of my working. Um, and it's it, on Saturdays and on Sundays I'm working. And so everybody's like, uh, when do you not work? <laughs> and it's all kind of blended together because prior to ISU, I was also working from home. So when you work from home, everything kind of blends together. And so I really wasn't finding that me time and I was denying that I needed that because my me time was really work time. So thanks for sharing that. That's something Absolutely. that um, I'm learning as well because um, I do currently work from home and the struggle has been taking the time to separate myself um, and especially I'm currently in a PhD program. And so everything that I read is all about um, what my potential topic will be and things for coursework. Um, but how I started taking my me time is before my workday starts, I started working out um, three days a week. And so I actually take time to go to the gym. I drive about 25 minutes to get to this gym. I'm there, let it all out there. And then I come home and I shower and then I get my day started. But even during lunchtime, especially when I'm having like a hectic morning, I'll take a 15 minute shower again during lunchtime. Um, there is this Shea Sugar Scrub. I forget the name of the brand, but just 15 minutes of using that Moroccan Rose um, Shea Butter Scrub just works wonders for me. So that would be my quick me time. Go ahead, Dr. E. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying, I've been trying. Uh, thank you, thank you both for, for coming and Martha, thank you. What I do far as work, because at home I go directly to the television. So that's, but that's not, I just fall asleep. But at work, what I have started to do like this year is block out the first hour so I don't want anyone to ask me, do I have, do you want to have a meeting? I don't want, I don't want anything. But during that hour, Martha and I have created this pattern that we just talk every morning about everything, not dealing with work. So that helps us recharge and get ready 
for the influx of strangeness that would come within a day. So the, I, I never thought that as a strategy, but that's a really, really good, it helps us kind of sort of keep level during the day because we take that time to talk. Yeah, so I, I definitely appreciate all of you sharing and I'm seeing so many like head nods when people are saying stuff because sometimes it's it's things that we do that we don't realize that, hey, it is our me time or it is something that is unplugging and allowing us to recharge and to reset. And it can be um, so many different things, you know, it can take so many different shapes, but it's going back to kind of what Annie said earlier in the sense of, is it something that, hey, this is the type of self-care that I have to do. It's every day, it's the mandatory. Is it the kind that is a result of me not taking self-care? Or is it the kind that I can really be intentional about? Um, so thank you all for sharing. So our next thing is really thinking about um, how you feel when you implement self-care. So as women, I kind of said this before, and especially, you know, like I think about my mother, you know, raising the three of us and just how I watched her just sacrifice over and over and over again, you know, and I think it's, it's just a trait that we as women do, period. We, we, we see something that isn't or is going wrong and we'll just be like I got it let me just fix it let me just do it and it allows us to just give so much of ourselves to everyone else that we forget to give back to ourselves so our quote on this one is from Eleanor Brown and it says rest and self-care are so important when you take time to replenish your spirit it allows you to serve others from overflow. You cannot serve from an empty vessel. So when we really think about that, that's what a lot of us were, were basically saying when we were sharing our, our me time. And it goes back to the wanting to implement radical self-care. So this intentional moment in time to, to step away and Again, thanks, uh, Shantries, for the, the work me time, you know, versus the home me time, because that's real. And, you know, I remember uh, in the middle of class one day, and I had said something, and the students just all got extremely upset. <laughs> and one of these little kids came up to me and just got all in my face. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, there's a part of me that wanted to respond in one way. But then there was a part of me that realized my job is valuable and uh, I don't want to go to jail for one of these little kids. <laughs> so it was, let me walk out of the room and I just went and stood outside. Like most of you all know, you know, where my building is. So I'm right near and right by um, the president's office. So just went and stood in that little grassy area between our building and between what is that Gillum or whatever, and just stood there under the trees, <laughs> just like, okay, like Lord, and just taking that like 15 minutes to just stand there. And similar to how Ira said, like being in nature, you know, and just allowing myself to then just be like, okay, like <laughs> calm down, you know. Um, but it's one of those things that I, I can't give to others. I can't give to my students. I can't give to my family. I can't give to my friends if I do not allow myself to really replenish and recharge. So um, let's just see, how, how do you guys feel when you engage in, when you implement self-care, not when you engage, when you implement self-care? So I kind of said that going from here to there, that moment of like peace a little bit. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to share about how they feel when they actually implement self-care? For me, it's empowered because this has been a journey of mine of self-care. So anytime after taking time for myself, I feel proud because there was a there was a time when that wasn't being done um, and I was putting everything and every anything on my plate and not taking the time for myself so anytime I didn't accomplish a successful twist out or 
after my coffee runs. Okay, you're ready for the day. You took this time. Oh, look at you got this routine down. Now it's a priority, you know, taking proud in that grace that I allow for myself. So to me, it's empowering and motivating. Yeah, I love those words, empowering and motivating. Anyone else? When I, I, I was going to say, for me, I don't think empowering, I want to be there. I think selfish. Like you're so selfish, you're thinking of yourself and not others. And so I think that's just a testament to where we all are on our journey of Mm -hmm. self-care. I like what um, Corlicia said when she pointed out the stewardship, because I think that's the real struggle, right? Between feeling selfish and uh, replenishing yourself so that you can be a good steward to others. Yeah, I agree. Edie? Yeah, I think it really does make a difference, Annie, with where we are in our journey, because I think back to when my children were young, and this conversation for me would have sounded completely different then than it does now. Um, When I was um, teaching K through 12, those breaks, they came at such magical times. They came exactly when we needed them. But now being in higher ed and being 12 months, I have to recognize the need for a break before it even gets me. Um, Because I don't get spring break, I don't get fall break, I don't get summer break. Um, I have to know, I have to know that what, you know, before it comes that it's time to pause and it's refreshing. It's, it's a type of renewal and I don't, I prefer to go somewhere. I, I'm a traveler. I love to go places, but just not to have to get up that early in the morning, not to have to deal with all those office things. Um, you, you see people when they come back from vacation, you look at their faces and, and you can see how relaxed their faces look. Um, even, even their body posture is slightly different. Um, and, and it's, it's something that we have to do for ourselves. We have to take those breaks. We have to get away, I think. No, I, I definitely agree. It's, um, it's weird because living through this pandemic and, you know, they, they cancel spring break for us. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things that I don't know what other people are doing and if I'm not supposed to do this, don't tell on me. But um, <laughs> we actually gave our students two days where as a program, we're not giving them classes because we understand how important it is to take the break and to replenish, you know, so that they can get through the rest of the semester. So just like you were saying, Edie, like, you know, I mean, coming off a of sabbatical, I was like, whew, like, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you got a whole new sense of energy. And, and I, I definitely get that coming off of any of those breaks because it gives us that chance to do that. Shantrice, did you have something? I was going to validate you that we're doing flex days for our students. So they get one day a month um, in which their classes are canceled. So you're doing the right thing. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks. (laughs) Does anyone have anything else they wanted to share about um, how they feel when they implement self-care? So far, I've heard empowering, motivating, refreshing, energizing, um, selfish. I would say for me, um, the word that comes to mind is connected, Um, both connected with myself and connected with my higher power, because whenever I'm implementing self-care, that is a time where I'm shifting, I'm shifting my focus from worrying about everyone else and trying to help everyone else, you know, I'm no longer in that helper role and I'm prioritizing myself, so you know, in those moments, like kind of like I said earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, that's when I truly tap into what is going on with me, what are my needs, and how am I, you know, uh, meeting those needs or not meeting those needs. Um, and it's a time for me to just, yeah, to just really check in. And then, like I said, with my higher power, I think. Um, for me, those two things go hand in hand, like checking in with myself and my emotions, 
um, and also, I don't know, involving God in it, I guess, because that's, that's the power that I seek and the force that I seek when, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to navigate the different emotions or experiences that I'm going through. I have a question. So I agree with everyone's sentiments on how you feel when you implement the self-care. Um, I don't know if this is this workshop, but I would love as someone who is struggling regarding the discipline on how, like, so for example, Iris, how do you just not, how do you take your lunch and seriously take your lunch? <laughs> like, or for those that had any other, like suggestions would be totally appreciated from, from, some, <laughs> from someone who is, personally right now struggling um to implement that self-care lauren let me can i can i jump in and say something you know i think for me i i, I think that with with women in general because we are the the ones that typically take care of things you know we we're the the um helpers, you know, we're the, the nurturers, we're the whatever, you know, whether we're a mother or a, a spouse or whatever. But I think that as we get older, you know, we've, a lot of us that are older, you know, we've already went through that. We've done that kind of stuff. You know, we've been parents, we've been grandparents, we've been the spouse, we've taken care of sick loved ones, you know, and I think there comes a point in time as you get older that you say, I'm tired. I need to take a break. I need to start taking care of me because if me doesn't take care of me, no one else is either because they're too needy. So I think that, you know, as we get older and we really do an assessment of our lives and you know, know that we're blessed to be the ages we are and still functioning to some degree that we have to have to start taking that time. You know, no one is really as important to us when we have needs that are going unmet. OK, so, you know, whether we're that that instructor or we're that advisor, we're, you know, the, the spouse, we're the mother. There's a lot of things on our plates that we have to take care of. And, you know, sometimes I think we get so involved in that that we forget that we have to take care of us. But I'm finding, and I don't know if it's just because I'm working from home now, I'm finding that I'm doing more of that me time. You know, if I don't feel like doing something right then, I'm not going to do it. I'll get back to it. I'll get it done, but it's on my time. So, you know, I don't know, again, if that's, you know, just being a, an older adult that's already been there and done that, or you know, if it's something else. But we have to take time for ourselves. We have to realize that we're not going to be any good for anyone else if we can't function in a way that we need to to help someone else. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll find that, you know, you just have to make time. You'll, you'll find time to, to do things that, you know, th uh, some of the rest of you were talking about what you do on your um, work time to, you know, relax and, and, and at home. And because I work from home, I find that I'm spending a lot of time just meditating, looking out the window, looking at the squirrels run up and down the tree, wondering how far up that tree are they going and what are they going up there for, <laughs> you know? So, you know, you, you have to create that environment for you where you feel like you can relax and just chill. And, you know, for everyone, it's going to be something different. But 
you know, I, I'm doing good where I am right now. You know, this, this working from home is really working for me and uh, got to go back though. I know, but uh, I don't know. It just, you know, you, you just have to take it, you know, day by day and learn from the things that, <clears throat> you know, you might've made mistakes on and pick up the pieces and, you know, create a new environment. But yeah, you are important. You are important. And you do have to take that time. Um, you know, life goes on. You know, no one is indispensable. And if you wear yourself out, you know, trying to accomplish and do this and do that, then you're not going to be any good for anybody, including yourself. And then you're going to be in a situation where somebody has to come in and take care of you. So, you know, you got to look out for yourself, do the things that you enjoy while you can, because tomorrow isn't promised to us. That's all. I think Vanita is right that age does give you a different perspective. Mm -hmm. But I think you all are, people younger than me are, even, even me, because I'm benefiting from the age we're living in right now, um, to get this message, to take care of yourself, you know, to live in this time where, where you're reminded that you are important. And that means yep. that you need to take care of yourself. It's not a message. It's always been there for us. So, so take advantage of that and, and um, come to groups like this, you know, listen to the message. Um, surround yourself with people who are doing positive things for themselves. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's critical to do. Lauren, you asked about, well, how do you, how do you, how do you make that lunchtime your sacred time? It's the same thing that Yolanda and Martha do in the morning. They block that time off. I, I really shouldn't say this out loud, but this goes no further than this Zoom. I have blocked off every Friday on my calendar from now to eternity. Because in my world, Friday is not the day you have a meeting at six o'clock in the evening. Friday is oh, the day know. everything winds down. Friday is my read my articles and get caught up day. So yeah, there are times that things do slip into my calendar on a Friday, but not too often. Control your calendar. Um, learn to organize your time and your work, your workspace and your work time. And keep your keep your calendar, control your calendar. That's all I got for you. Thank That's you. what I was going to ask. That was Lauren. very powerful. Sorry. Yes. yes. That's all I was going to say. I said it's blocked out. Like my flex time, which is designated to catch me up, is blocked out. Nothing, nothing can be, nobody can meet with me. Nobody can send a request for me. Um, I would have said the biggest thing is to make the time. And then I also to stay disciplined, I hold myself accountable by setting goals each month. And in those goals are self-care activities and they're categorized by, I just have a sheet of paper here. They're categorized by different um, ways that I want to grow within myself. Um, so spiritually, financially, um, career, professional, all that. And so when I'm blocking out those times, I'm staying disciplined within myself. So I think it's just telling people no <laughs> as well. Um, I tell my staff, unless it's an emergency, do not hit my line after 10 p.m. Um, I live with my staff being a res life coordinator. Don't knock on my door um, unless it can be handled the next day. And they've all respected that. And I said that from the get go. Um, so making it a standard of blocking out your time. Well, people have already kind of said um, what I was going to say in different words, but um, I mean, sometimes you can engage in self-care spontaneously, and that's great. Like Lauren and I walked to the park yesterday, uh, took my dog. It was nice. Um, but other times, you, especially when you struggle with self-care, I do think it's important to schedule it because it is just as important as you know, that meeting or that conference that you have to go to, like you are just as important. Um, so plan ahead, um, whether, you know, that's on a weekly basis or a daily basis, when you 
you know, you wake up in the morning and you're sipping your coffee and you're looking at your schedule and thinking about everything you have to do. Self-care needs to come to your mind as well. Like, okay, this is what I have to do today, but where am I going to fit in my me time? Where am I going to fit in my pause where I can just breathe and, you know, check in with myself or do something kind for myself? Um, And I mean, I think this goes with a lot of things, but, you know, if you write stuff down and plan in that way and make it concrete, you're much more likely to follow through. So um, I think people's suggestions to to make schedules and, and put it in your calendar are right on the money. Yeah, I will um, just say that just just start little by little, Lauren. <laughs> it'll, it'll happen. So, and just like everything that we've been trying to say, and we're gonna talk a little more about this in the next side, is that we, we know it it doesn't feel right sometimes to do it. We, we everybody shared the, the good words, you know, except for Annie, she, she shared that selfish, you know, but I mean, it's, it's a process and we're all at different stages in this process. But little by little, I have a, um, one of my really good friends um, slash cousin, she schedules a whole Saturday, that's her self care day you know, and it's important. And it's just like this quote um, is saying that it's that time to replenish. And I think if you start realizing how important you are, then you'll take advantage of being radical and actually being intentional about scheduling it instead of something happening where we're forced to realize how important it is. For me, it was a series of things happening that I had to realize, oh, <laughs> you know, I, I I need to implement self-care. But it's one of those things also where it's basically um, if we if we took the little bit each day, then maybe we'd just be fine in the long run. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Dr. E, can we have another session on how to control your calendar? Thank you, appreciate it. As Professor Azizi pointed out, um, I was the only one who said something negative, but I, I will say in my defense that I think the fact that we're having this workshop means that many of us may say what we would like to do, but struggle with self-care in some form or fashion. And um, I think that is because we oftentimes give more of ourselves. Um, And we do think that it is uh, being selfish or self-indulgent. So I like this, quote by Andre Lord, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. How does this quote make you feel? Anyone? It makes me want to control my calendar. (laughs) (laughs) Good. Because I think that... um, Part of this is not just changing our behaviors, but it's changing the way we think about self-care. It's it's changing our mindset. And so that's part of our our strategy today to help you um, kind of reframe self-care. Anybody else wanna share how this um, quote might make you feel? It validates my decisions when I do have those slight moments of like, girl, you just sat on this couch all Saturday um, watching these shows, watching this movie. You could have read this chapter, got this homework assignment done, but it was like, no, Chantrice, you needed this. Okay, 2021, you in the relationship with yourself to empower yourself to be better. So that's that's what that makes me feel. Just validates. Awesome. I love that it says it's an act of political warfare, because if nothing else, it it shows you how important it is. Yes, I agree. So I I thought it would be um, beneficial to kind of define selfishness, because I mean, we all know what it is, but I think once I really read through the definition, and then I thought, that's not me at all. 
And selfishness is defined as lacking consideration for others, concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. And if you go back to the one slide that talked about stewardship, um, our acts of um, oftentimes taking care of other people um, and denying ourselves is quite opposite of being selfish. And most of the time, that's what we do. That's what we do as women. Um, whether we're being a mother or being mother-like or being a mentor or being a friend, um, oftentimes we neglect ourselves for others. If you think about the reasons why most of us engage in self-care, it's, it's to take care of others. It's that stewardship. And we must show um, ourselves the same compassion that we give others. And um, psychologist Kristen Neff calls this self-compassion. Um, practicing self-compassion is a way of relating to ourselves kindly. It's embracing ourselves, which for most of us may feel very uncomfortable. I know it does for me. But there are three components of self-compassion. They are treating ourselves with kindness, um, common humanity, and mindfulness of struggles. And treating ourselves with kindness is just, it's, it's um, loving ourselves through our mistakes um, versus criticizing ourselves or judging ourselves harshly because we've made a mistake. Um, the second component, common humanity, um, is versus um, the feeling of isolation. So connecting yourself to others. You make mistakes because you're human and that, that's what makes us human. Um, you haven't made the worst mistake of, out there. Um, you're not the only one who's made that mistake and you won't be the last one to make that mistake. So understanding that um, helps us to provide more compassion to ourselves. And then finally, the mindfulness of struggles, understanding that let's say you made a mistake or um, you're criticizing yourself harshly or judging yourself harshly, um, recognizing that pain, that uh, being mindful of what has caused you pain um, and don't try to shun it or repress it, but um, welcome it, accept it, um, understand it, kind of frame it in a way um, that uh, you can comfort yourself, that allows you to comfort yourself. Um, one thing I thought of while I was going through this was um, society loves reviews. Like when you buy something, we all want to check to see if it works just the way that it's said, right? Um, if it's a good product, if it'll be worth our purchasing. Give yourself a positive review. If you don't believe in yourself, why should other people? Um, think of yourself as a close friend. Think of yourself as your mother, your child, someone you love dearly that's hurting. What would you say to them? You wouldn't say you're stupid. I can't believe you did that. Well, I hope you wouldn't. <laughs> so talk to yourself like you would someone you love, according to Brene Brown. So that leads us to um, how can we show ourselves love and compassion? And um, I like this quote, how you love yourself is how you teach others to love you by Rappi Kaur. Um, this made me think of the um, love languages. I don't know if, um, how many of you are familiar with the five love languages by Gary Chapman. So uh, as Chantrice mentioned, she's in a relationship with herself. If you could go back to the yeah, that, that, slide, that slide is fine. Wait, I don't know where I am now. <laughs> yeah, that slide is fine. Um, as Chantrice had mentioned, she's in a relationship with herself. Um, a relationship with yourself should be your first priority. Um, to love others, you must first love yourself. Um, and so that's when I begin to think about these love languages that are usually in connection with a relationship with others. 
Um, your love language is um, what you need to experience from others in order to feel love. Um, I, I, I came up with the analogy, we're like a machine that functions or operates, let's say by gasoline. Um, will, that machine will operate by gasoline no matter who fills it up, right? So whether it's you who fill it up or other people who fill it up. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that what you need in terms of from others, in terms of your love language is what you need to provide to yourself. And so I took the, um, you can go to the next one, the kind of the chart that um, Gary Chapman developed. And I, um, some of this may not make sense because I did it myself. I plugged in um, how to speak your, your love language. So basically this is speaking to yourself, how to communicate to yourself based on your love language. So if your love language is words of affirmation, um, then speak encouraging words to yourself, speak kind words to yourself, affirm yourself, show yourself appreciation. And how can you do that? Um, you can use put post-it notes all around your house, in your bathroom, um, at work, on your desk. Um, things to avoid, self-criticism. We do it, we do it so well and we don't think twice about when we're criticizing ourselves. When we're beating ourselves up, we do it so effortlessly. And it takes a lot, I know for myself, to say nice words about the hard work that I've done to accomplish something. Um, the only one that I thought was a little more challenging to kind of um, change in terms of loving yourself is the physical touch one. Um, but what I thought about uh, with physical touch, you could hug your dog. If you have a pet, hug your cat. Um, you can hug your children or your significant other because that's what you need at that time, right? You can also comfort yourself. Um, you can roll up into a ball and take a nap or, or something like that. But the main thing is to avoid neglecting yourself um, or abusing yourself, either uh, emotionally or psychologically, and of course, physically. So what I've done is I've just kind of converted some of the things that uh, some of the recommendations that were presented based on um, loving others. And you can just simply flip, flip that to loving yourself and making yourselves a priority. Okay, we have reached our takeaways. So even if it makes others uncomfortable, I will love who I am. Uh, Janelle Monet. So that that goes to even our discussion earlier that Lauren kind of brought up and how do you block time out? Like it might make people a little upset because they really want to meet with you over lunch and that's all that they have. Well, okay, find another time. <laughs> like it's one of those things that when I said I was kind of put in a situation where I had to um, remind myself how important I was to take care of myself. Uh, it was one of those things where it's like, if I couldn't do this, or if God forbid something happened, and I couldn't come in to work tomorrow, you guys would find a way to make stuff happen without me. And I think it's a reminder that we sometimes we, we place things at work or things with family so much more important than They'll, they'll make a way without you, <laughs> you know? So it's one of those things that, hey, sometimes loving ourselves and being radical and giving ourselves the time to pause and the time to replenish might make other people uncomfortable, but how uncomfortable do we allow ourselves to get if we don't do that? You know, so it's one of those things that is just a reminder that I've, I've got to love me first. You know, I, I can't love everyone else if I'm not taking the time to really love myself and to like Chantrice is saying, date, date yourself for a year. I tell all my students that too. That's the one thing you'll hear me tell them is what's your me time? 
and you need to just go date yourself go go watch a movie by yourself go to dinner by yourself because if you don't date yourself and you don't learn how to love you then when you get in a relationship who are you you become just a I don't know like a a reflection of the other person where it's like what do you want to eat I don't know what you want to eat like (laughs) you know because I don't have an opinion of my own anymore so it's it's so important so it's okay making others uncomfortable when we love ourselves so um hopefully you got basically just a little bit of importance of how important it is to implement radical self-care which we are saying is intentionally loving you so what we are challenging everyone to do is self-care bingo try to get bingo each week so be radical Um, and this is just a quick list of some of the things you could do Uh, and it's one of those things that You'll see on here, it's it's meditate. I know some of you mentioned that, you know, that's kind of a thing that some people do. That's that's one of my me times. I try and wake up early enough in the morning and I definitely set aside like, hey, Monday mornings, I'm going to make sure I'm meditating. You know, the weekend, Friday mornings, those are my days that I know I could probably wake up early every other day, but I don't. I like to sleep. <laughs> so, so, but meditating, that that's something that I love to do. Um, and it's affirmations that I'll do when I'm doing that. And one of them, um, there's an affirmation that basically says, I'm love, loved, and lovable. And I love that one because it's a reminder. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't click nothing and it just says, we done. Um, it's just a reminder that, uh, that we are, it's okay to love ourselves and to do that. Um, you'll see, do yoga, listen to calming music, cook for yourself. Um, that's something I've shared with a lot of you that during this pandemic, uh, Aaron and I have tried so many different recipes, um, and, you know, try something new. Uh, we got a few new recipes we planning to try in the this week or next week uh, celebrate the little things so lauren if you're able to block out lunch for the rest of the week maybe you can't do it this week but if you could do one day i need you to like text me so we can celebrate <laughs> this little achievement because that that's what it is and surround yourself with people that can do that you'll see some of these on here say eat chocolate dance take a nap buy yourself flowers. That's part of that dating yourself. Um, Drink green tea. So I know bingo is usually straight across or straight up and down or diagonal, but I mean, maybe we can get a blackout card where you can get everything accomplished. So go for it. And we will leave you with um, learn to be fly or be fly. So first love yourself. Go ahead, Annie. So um, I, I saw this quote, it's learn to fly, which is first love yourself, others will come next. And um, so I thought, oh, that's cool, but I, I like be fly. Um, and so I spent like a day trying to figure out, you know, what an acronym for B would be. And I, I came up with boldly embrace first loving yourself. Um, and then others will come next. So don't don't be like me and have this retirement view of self care. I'll take care of myself when I retire. You know? um, and so putting yourself first, prioritizing yourself um, will only make you better and more useful for others. That is it. Any final questions, comments, thoughts? Thank you. We appreciate it. Oh, we have giveaways. Um, we have some, I think we have like, we have some books. Yeah, we got journals, right? Journals and little oh. bath scrub things. So I don't Dr. know how e, the giveaway you want us to tell us how the giveaway work? You can randomly pick four people. I think you have enough 
mask and the B and three, two or three of the books. So yeah, you can just randomly ask questions or I'll give you the list and you just pick four people, five people. So either way. We... <laughs> what? Do y'all ship? <laughs> yes. Um, Annie, do you have a, a question? I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a question. <laughs> so after leaving this workshop, what's one thing that you will do tomorrow or this week to implement uh, one act of self-care? Radical self-care where it's intentional and you've planned it. I have flex time for Friday from eight to one, but I'm going to go shopping, hit up TJ Maxx, um, Target, uh, and then go grocery shopping for the weekend because I'm also going to be on duty. But that's my self-care time that I'm going to be out of the office. You're going to stimulate the economy. Yes, that's that's what I'm here for, you know? <laughs> Still didn't touch my stimmy though, so we could be doing good. For me, um, I am doing a, a program tomorrow after work. So my work days are going to be kind of long this week. So on Thursday, I'm planning on coming here to the counseling center. I come here after hours sometimes because for those of you who don't know, in our conference room, we have all kinds of paints and art supplies and um, the staff, a lot of times we will, you know, well, not this year with the pandemic, but in the past, like when I was an intern here, um, we would sometimes just take these self-care days when we were slower and we would make jewelry, um, paint, like all kinds of stuff. So since I live across the street and Dr. Chu knows this, like, in fact, one day he uh, walked in, it was like, 8 p.m. and I was like ah. and then I was like what are you doing here he's like what are you doing here but I'll come in and I'll just create and I don't know yet what I'm going to do I don't have an agenda for what kind of art I'm going to make but I'm feeling artistic and I'm feeling like I don't know putting my expressing myself through a creative medium so I plan on spending an evening here um, later this week. Oh. We 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 had this song that we wanted to play. Um, so if that's okay to play it while we're kind of concluding, it's "Clever" by um, Erica Badu. It's really a song about loving yourself. Is it playing? You can't hear it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see, sorry about that. Can you, can you hear it now? You have to share your screen and share whatever you're. Ah, uh, okay. This wasn't an option. Can you hear it now? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> nope, not at all. Everybody listen to Clever by Eric Badu later. Okay. <laughs> um, I swear we had this planned out, right? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> it never works the way you plan. Exactly. Uh, that, that's all we have. Dr. Evil, let us know how many people we get to pick and we will do so. Thank you very, very, very much. Danny and Azizi, uh, you're all going to make me do self-care. We've been talking about it for a whole year and of course, the only thing I can come up to have an hour on the in the morning, but 
okay, you made me realize I have to do something else. So does anyone have any closing questions, comments, or considerations they wanna share with our two awesome facilitators? I just want to say um, thank you for the invite and thank you for speaking on this topic. Um, I just recently um, moved to a new position um, within my professional career and it's a lot intense. Um, however, I will say that um, I used to think about the phrase, what got you here won't keep you here. And generally when you hear that, that has a negative connotation to it. But through our discussion today, I'm now reframing that to be, you know, what got me here, kind of overworking myself and um, being 100% accessible, that won't keep me here. I will end up running myself down to the ground. Um, and so being radical um, and implementing self-care is what's gonna actually keep me here and even propel me forward. So I just wanna thank you all for, for the topic today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have Iris and you have Yolanda and Lauren were also facilitators at different sessions. So they're all recorded. So you can always go back and watch them. If there are no other questions, thank you all and have a good night.